<laughs> Another right? Doesn't that look scary? video of yours that I watched today was a video that showed the similarities, not just between pyramids, but between construction methods all over the world in Japan. I had no idea that they had made the sarcophagus covers in Japan mm -hmm. that were exactly the same shape right. as the one, and odd, oddly shaped, exactly the same as the, same as the ones they made in Egypt. And in a place, there is supposed to be zero connection between ancient Japan and ancient Egypt. That's not supposed to exist. And mm -hmm. if you compare that sarcophagus work, it's like, it looks unbelievable, uncannily similar. Impossible, almost impossible that two people would come up with the same design. Right. Because it's, yeah. it's like coming up with, you know, I don't know, I, mean, I don't have a good, like if someone, like this lighter, right. if someone buy, I mean, this is an unusually shaped lighter, the way the top pops. The, right. If someone just coincidentally without any internet came up with this on the other side of the planet, you'd be like, how the fuck? It's so oddly shaped. Yeah. Right. Like the button's in the same place, the lid's in the same place. There's no way. Right. That's what it yeah. looks like to me. And the fact that it took an enormous amount of effort to make and move and put it into place because you're talking about incredibly heavy stone and hard stone. Yeah, like that's the other people don't appreciate just how hard this igneous stone is that these things are made from. Like granite, granodiorite, cyanite. Like these are it's harder than steel. Like it's it's you know there's six point five seven on the Mohs scale. It's it's incredible work. Like and the fact that these similar construction methods existed in Peru, yep. they existed in Egypt, they Easter existed Island. in Japan, and right. we don't know how old stone is. Right. That's what's really wacky. When we talk about like carbon dating, they're not carbon dating stone. No. They they really don't know. So right. even when they they go back to ancient Egypt and they say, oh, we we date the pyramids construction to two thousand five hundred BC, it's a fucking guess. That's what I think. <laughs> it's a guess. <laughs> it really is. It re it has to be a guess. It well, really can't be anything other than a guess. They can measure organic matter. They can measure stuff that's in between the stones. But we have no idea when that was put there. If if something existed for tens of thousands of years before we're dating it. We really wouldn't know. Well, we would have evidence that these, of course people would still live there. Of course people would still r live around them. And we would have evidence that those people had left stuff behind that was a certain age, but we have zero evidence as to how old those things are. Right. That's right. And, and they, when I found that out, I was baffled. Yeah. Yeah. Because I always thought they knew 2,500 BC, rock solid. This is it. Well, they they tie it to the the the, the guy, the the king. They know when Khufu right. lived, and so they try and tie. And literally with the Great Pyramid, very little evidence. There's like a uh, this big statue of him that they found down in the Valley Temple, nowhere near it. And then there's a, a glyph on the inside. There's a lot of controversy around that but there uh, there are some of these artifacts they do for that reason because they they date a lot of stuff based on the site that they found it so if there's organic material at the site that they found it and what's been i've found it's it's a kind of like a smoking gun piece in all of this is all the vases so you, are you familiar with the, yes, the incredible stone yes, vases yes, that they make yeah, in please Egypt? talk about them yeah so they in in there is a, a collection of these things they're made from igneous stone there and jamie i've got a few pictures of the vases in that vase directory and they date back – It's what's interesting to me about these is, is that they, they, they're some of the earliest types of uh, artifacts that we find. They stretch back far into what we would call pre-dynastic time, basically Mesolithic times. Uh, right back to even 15,000 years ago, there was a site called Toshka um, – that uh, that was dug up. It's underwater now. But in this, and it was a primitive burial. There was a guy uh, that was curled up in this in this burial site on the side. Go back to that, Jamie. The one, the thin card one. Yeah, what is, so, what's going on there? So this is an example, and these vases display just astonishing aspects of precision and engineering. So this is an example of just how thin this material is. So it's igneous stone. This might be porphyry or something like this, a very, very hard stone, very hard to work, but also brittle when it becomes thin. You can see the giant crystal occlusions, those the white marks in it. This stuff becomes brittle, yet it's been worked down to this thinness because this one's been damaged and you can see how thin that interior mm. wall is. Petrie, Flinders Petrie is the, the great Egyptologist, the first guy to really start applying engineering principles from the industrial age to this stuff. He found one, he talks about one in his work that was one fortieth of an inch thick. Wow. A fortieth of an inch thick. And the, the interesting thing about these vases, there's 50,000 plus of them were discovered beneath the Step Pyramid of Djoser. Uh He collected them all up. And even in the museum that's at Saqqara, they talk about, yeah, this is so... I've been down underneath the Step Pyramid. This is a fragment of, a, of one of these vases that I found you can handle down there. And even in the museum there, they talk about, well, these he didn't have them, mate. He, these were inherited objects from earlier times. Like, they, they get the concept right. 
And so these things stretch back way back into time. There's pre-dynastic artifacts from pre-dynastic burials. But there's always these sort of arguments, well, can you do this by hand? Can you not? Um, and so recently there's been some work done. I've been working with a couple of guys, um, the son of uh, Christopher Dunn, who wrote some real seminal uh, textbooks on ancient Egyptian technology, his son Alex uh, and Nick Sierra, they're uh, qualified like professional metrologists. They work they work for Rolls Royce in Indianapolis. They uh, they make like you know aerospace parts, turbine blades, things like that. They've got their hands on a pre dynastic Egyptian vase, and for the first time, they've actually been able to scan this thing using a structured light scanner and define the specific elements of precision on it and it's just astounding like this is this this puts the whole concept of can these even remotely been made by hand to bed like these things had to have been made on a machine and made with extreme precision because this vase that is is pre-dynastic this is a, a picture of the vase here that they found in in a private collection because i should say generally archaeologists egyptologists they're not engineers they're not particularly interested in sort of how things were manufactured so what what they've done is they've taken this and put this in a machine and it, it it's a structured light scanner so it creates like a point cloud of different lights and then you match a geometric shape to it be that like a, a flat plane a cylinder a sphere a, a cone and then you can perform sort of geometric um, calculations on it and define things like precision so if you go back to that uh the surface a the vase lip right so this is you can see down on the bottom they, they've created a, a, a point cloud of the top of this lip, so the flatness, and it's, they've called this surface A. It's comprised of 3,813 uh, points, and it's within three thousandths of an inch uh, of being basically perfectly flat. Wow. But and that's three thousandths of three an inch. Three thousandths of an inch. And this is over who knows how many thousands of years well, of erosion and it, sand and dust and wind. And exactly. It's, it's at least... 5,000 years old. I, I suspect this could be far older than that. Now, what's interesting, once you start doing this, and if you go to the next one, Jamie, you now, he's now, now we're looking at the, the lip. So this, you take a cylinder and you match, you basically take 10,000 points plus and you match the, the, the inside, the mouth of the vase to a cylinder. And what you can now measure that against the other surface. So if you think of like the top of it as being like the x-axis, this is now your y-axis. So that first symbol here, the perpendicular symbol, what, you sh what it's showing is that how perpendicular is this cylinder on its axis relative to the top of the vase, the surface A that's on the top, within one thousandth of an inch. One thousand. So it's perfectly perpendicular to within one thousandth of an inch of the top of the vase. 